All right, we're getting ready for Game of Thrones Season 6 within days now. And with that, we come to predictions about whether who will live or who will die, what has happened to uh, the Lord Commander, what is going on. Uh, and with that, we have something that's kind of trending now, which we talked about a couple days ago on the Facebook live feed, which you should go check out. And that is A Song of Ice and Data. So using analysis of the novels that George R. R. Martin wrote and the show, uh, specific features are chosen and compared uh, using a specific analysis trend, which I will talk about at the right after this in this uh, uh, story and they predicted who will die who should die and who should be alive and there were some very interesting uh, findings one of theirs is that Jon Snow is only 11% likely to die uh, Sansa Stark is the most likely to live with only a 3% chance of death Cersei at 16% of death Mace Tyrell 18 Roose Bolton uh, unfortunately, a 28% uh, chance of death, which gives them a very high survival rate. According to them, uh, Tom and Baratheon is the most likely to die, and I mean, think about it, you didn't think he'd be king forever, did you? Uh, followed by Stannis Baratheon, and surprisingly, Daenerys Targaryen at 95% death rate, uh, Davos Seaworth 91, Peter Baelish 91. I'm going to get back to Daenerys later. Uh, there were some other fun stats they found by an analyzing the characters and specific trends between and relationships between the characters. Uh, the male to female ratio in the novels is over 2 to 1. But when it comes to survival, women are the survivors. So men are most likely to be killed off, but they're also the most likely to be there, which makes sense if you think about it. Uh, men are usually nobles. Women are more likely to be peasants. Uh, a Clash of Kings has the most characters at 437. A Dance with Dragons, book five, has the least amount by only having 104. Uh, and there are typically about 30 characters per episode. So. You may find this a little surprising, that Jon Snow is likely to live and Danny is likely to die. Uh, they use this with a, a technique called machine learning, which is that it allows computers to make predictions for them using uh, specific uh, data plugged in. And those features that were plugged in were, I think, over 30. And there's several of them, including, uh, first of all, every single book. So A Feast of Crows, character's appearance in the book, House, which uh, house the character belongs to, culture, what social group do they belong to, dance with drag, you know, the ghost of the books, all like that. Also analyzed are nobility, gender, title, age, is the spouse alive, are they married, are they related to the dead, uh, what is their popularity score, which is uh, something that is used using data that is on the internet from fans rather than the books themselves, is their father alive, are they a major or minor character, and you may think everyone can be killed, but Think about it. More, most of the major characters are still alive, uh, st statistically. Uh, there's also, is their mother alive? Is their heir alive? What about their spouse, father, mother, heir? And then those, uh, the importance of each one of these uh, features is ranked, and then it's combined to form a statistical analysis after that. There are also very interesting articles related to the data as to, uh, specifically there's one that says why Jon Snow is not dead, and there are four reasons that contribute to that. One is our very own learning machine algorithm says so. Uh, there's also he's too popular to be killed off. Again, uh, popular characters do tend to live. Uh, Kit Harrington was on the set, and the last reason, which is the most uh, not supported reason, is he just can't be dead. Uh, there's also another article called Why Daenerys Targaryen Will Win the Game of Thrones, despite having a 95% uh, chance of being killed. So from their learning is she will probably become queen. She is the people's queen. She's commanding the Unsullied. She has a bunch of dragons uh, are reasons why and also the, their specific measure, uh, why she will likely be able to claim the Iron Throne, which I don't even know why people want, and, but then uh, kick the bucket. There's also some fun articles on the, the balance between uh, Reek slash Theon and Ramsay, who's likely to be killed between, in a clash between the two of them. Spoiler alert, it is Reek slash Theon. Uh, they're both kind of a-holes. Well, they're both, yeah, it's different levels. It's, it's interesting to think about. Uh, I did talk about this on our Facebook live stream. And you can use all the data you want. You know, trends from George R. R. Martin. I mean, there he is a specific, like, god of this world. And he does have certain trends, certain ways he likes to write. And it does make sense in a way. But then it's also, you know, we're at this point where... 
we, we're going to see season six before we see a lot of the analogies in the book. I mean, what if one goes one way and one goes the other? Or what if uh, the producers of Game of Thrones are given some license to make different changes from what the Bible set out by uh, George R. R. Martin already is? And also, it's just, it is data, but it's predicting a work of fiction. So you have to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, audience, do you agree with the song of ice and data? It is a lot of data to get through. I recommend you do it. Uh, we'll include a link below. I believe it's at got.show, which I don't know how they, they, they got that URL, but good job on you. Uh, let us know what you think about this data and about its predictions below in the comments. Like and subscribe for more, and we'll be seeing you in the season of Game of Thrones.